So again, when we're writing these verbal descriptions for our systems, we're going to be looking to define our variables, which we're going to literally write down what X and Y mean. And we'll look for in the word blurb, the word total to find our equal to amount, and then the values that go with specific variables. So in this first example here, and we're going to annotate this, it says tickets to a basketball game cost $5 for general admission and $3 for students. At a recent game, 286 tickets were sold, generating $1,006 in revenue. How many of each type of ticket were sold? Okay, this is kind of a puzzle that we can solve using a system of equations. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our variables. It says let G be the number of general admission tickets sold. So G is for general admission. Does that make sense to pick the letter G for general admission? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're going to pick S for the number of student tickets sold. And doesn't that make sense? So general admission is G, student tickets is S. Instead of using X's and Y's, we're using G's and S's. Okay? So if I go back into my word blurb, now that I know what the G and the S are standing for, I'm going to highlight all the letters and numbers that would go for general admission in red. Here's the word, word general admission. What number is right in front of that? Five dollars for general admission. Okay. So our general admission tickets cost five dollars. How much do our student tickets cost? Three dollars. Now do we see some total numbers? What are my two total numbers here? Huh? 286. 286 tickets were sold total for how much total money? Okay, so we've got total numbers and we've got individual numbers for each variable. The two facts that we know here will create our two equations. We're going to have a money equation and we're going to have an items or a total equation. So let's label them down here. This first one where it talked about the total amount of money. That's going to be our money equation. And this other one is going to be called our total equation because it's just totaling up my tickets. Okay. Please notice some things on how the example here wrote the equations. What number did they literally put next to the letter G? Five. five. Why did they put the five there? Because that's the general admission. Yeah, it says $5 for general admission and G is general admission, so 5G. Why did we put the three next to the S? Because that's for the students. That's the student tickets. It literally says $3 for students, so you put three S. For how much money in total? Do you notice how each of these numbers, when I read the blurb, had a dollar sign next to them? You have to keep all of the same item numbers together. So the three numbers that have dollar signs on them should go in the same equation. If we are uh, counting things like wheels or... Um, legs, I don't know, just items, those uh, item numbers should be in the same equation. Now, how did we decide to write this last total uh, equation? Where did I get the number 286 from? Um, 286 is from the tickets that were sold. The tickets that were sold. Now, why did I put just regular G plus regular S? Because it's not saying how much it is. It's not saying how much it is. But if you're totaling something up, just like in general, if you're like, let me count how many uh, missing homework assignments I have for Ms. Quigley, what would you do with all those missing homework assignments? You would, did you say throw them away? <laughs> no. You would add them up, and then you'd know how many homework assignments you're missing from me. So we're adding our values or our variables together to create a total equation. Sounds difficult, but it's really pretty simple. All we have to do is organize our thoughts together. Okay. So let's read this first one, the first example together. It says, an office manager buying lunch for his employees purchased a total of 21 burgers and pizzas. Each burger costs $8 and each pizza costs $6. If the office manager spent a total of $150, formulate a system of equations that can be used to find the number of burgers and pizzas that the office manager purchased. Okay, what are we talking about in this problem? The burgers and pizza. So we need to define some variables here. What letter should we use for burgers? B. I like it. All right, B is going to stand for burgers. So we've defined one of our variables. We're saying every time I write a B, it's really the word burgers. What else? What's another variable I should use? P for pizza. P for pizza. I like that too. 
So now when I'm writing my equations, everywhere I put a P, I'm really meaning the word pizza. Let's go black, back into this problem and let's reread it, finding the numbers that should go with each of our variables. It says we have a total of 21 burgers and pizzas. Ooh, that's nice. I needed that word total. So let's underline the word total of 21. That's gonna be for my total equation. If we keep reading, it says each burger costs $8. So where should, the, the number eight should be next to what letter? B for burger, right? Okay, and then it keeps going. It says pizza costs six dollars. Six should be next to what letter? P for pizza. And then you notice eight dollars and six dollars. There's both dollar signs on that one. So what else has a dollar sign in this problem? All right. So we know where all of these numbers should go. So for the first question, would it be a eight B? That's exactly right. I like that one, and that's my money equation because I have a certain type of number given to me. All of those numbers had dollar signs in it in the problem, right? So they need to all go together in the same equation because it's one type of item we're talking about, money, money, money. So eight burger plus six times pizza equals 150. That's a rip-off. I mean, it's kind of an expensive burger. Actually, no, it's... I mean, it's not like a McDonald's burger, but if it's probably like a, a burger that eight, that Smash is Burger, a Liberty <laughs> Burger, <laughs> JC's <laughs> Burger, maybe it comes with fries. It's a burger that costs. But that's a pretty good size, uh, like price for a pizza if it's a medium. $6? Actually, that's actually good. That's pretty good. Okay, let's go to our second equation here. What's the only number I have left that I haven't used? 20, uh, 21, right? Yeah. Okay, and all I have left is that it's a total of 21. How do you total up something? You add it. Okay, so I'm going to add together my variables. I'm going to add together the burgers, and I'm going to add together the pizzas for a grand total of 21. These two equations create a system of equations. Remember, two equations is called a system. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We need to write these systems so that later we can solve them. We're not really solving them yet today. We're just writing the system. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do these problems on the front really together today. Uh, you'll do your independent trials on uh, your homework or whatever. But in the center, of course, it says a brother and sister make dinner, each make dinner for their family. That seems fair. The brother has made dinner one more than twice the number of times his sister has made dinner. The brother and sister have made dinner a total of ten times for their family. Formulate a system of equations that can be used to find the number of times that the brother and sister have made dinner. All right, what variables do y'all want to use today? Yes. B for what? Brother. brother. And F for I'm going to put brother meals here. So the number of meals that the brother has cooked. And then what other letter? S, S for sister meals. Okay, let's go back and read the equation and see what numbers we can find in here. First time I see a number, it says the brother has made dinner one more than twice the number of times a sister has made dinner. Okay, so the brother has been made dinner one more than twice the sister. One more than twice the sister. Okay, and keep going. The brother and sister have made dinner a total of 10 times. There's that total. We like the total because it tells me what I'm looking for. We still need to write two equations from the two sentences, but this one I don't have a bunch of money numbers. I have a comparison. So let's write our comparison equation first. We're comparing the brother to the sister. It says, the brother has made dinner one more than twice the number of times the sister has made dinner. Okay, we're going to have to compare these things. Kind of like the warm-up we did where we were taking those English sentences and making them math. If I have the brother, the brother is equal to, what does it say? One. One more. So what's one? Obviously the number one. How do I do more than? Plus. Plus. One more than. And then it says twice the number of times the sister. How would I do twice the sister? 
to S. If we keep going, it says a total of 10 times. So I again have a total equation that I need to write. How did we total stuff up? We added them. So what am I adding together? Brother and sister for a grand total of how many for 10 meals? It doesn't matter if you do sister plus brother. For adding, the order does not matter. If we were having to subtract these things, order would matter. But in total equations, you're always adding. So it doesn't really matter. They usually put them in alphabetical order. This is going to homework? Mm -hmm. oh, it's good. Good. This is a really good question. He said, is the second equation always going to be a total? No, but most of the time it is a total equation. And actually, our next example is an example where it's not a total for the second equation. So let's read that one and see what's going on here. It says, a customer at a store paid $8 for two packs of pencils and three highlighters. At the same store, another customer paid 11 more than the first customer for one pack of pencils and nine highlighters. The price of pencils is the same and the price of highlighters is the same. Formulate a system of equations that can be used to find the price in dollars of each pack of pencils X and each highlighter Y. Okay, so they actually told me what letters to use this time. What did they tell me X is gonna stand for? Pack of pencils X. So X is the pencils. And what did they tell me to let Y be? The highlighters, the pack of highlighters. So, like I said, we could have used P and H, but they told us what letters to use. In fact, they used X and Y. Boring. But anyways, here we go. Okay, if we go back and read the equation to look for this information. It'd be money. The first place would be money, right? There's, th there's two money numbers. Is there three money numbers? No. No, so we're not going to end up having a money equation because I only have two of them, and I would need three numbers for money. So here's what we're going to look at. I'm going to just highlight the whole first sentence uh, in a different color for you guys right now. Do you see how that's the first customer? And do you see how the first customer, it talks about pencils and highlighters? Okay, so we have customer number one as going to be one of my equations. In that next sentence, it says another customer paid $11 more for one pack of pencils and nine highlighters. So the second customer, I'm still talking about pencils and highlighters. The third kind of system you can write is called a situational system. That's not an official title. That's what I like to call them. But we're going to write an, an equation for each customer or each situation. So situation one and situation two. In situation one, I've highlighted it in green, the first sentence there. It says I sold or this customer bought how many packs of pencils? Two. Two packs of pencils. Doesn't X represent pencils? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so two pencils. Plus two X plus three X, uh, Y. Plus three Y, equals very good. Eight. Equals that $8. That's the first scenario. That's the first situation. That's the first customer. Can you guys write the second situation for me? So reread the purple highlight and see if you can write that situation. This is the second customer. How many pencils did this customer buy? So one, and then what letter? X, because X. X is the pencils. They also bought how many highlighters? Nine. That's a lot of highlighters. So nine Y, because Y is highlighter. And they spent a total of how much money? 11. Ooh, they did not spend $11. This was a yeah, tricky. 11 more. 11 more. So what number is 11 more than the first customer? 19. 19. 11 more than what they spent. Totally tricky. You make sure these are just word problems that we have to put together. What I want to tell you though is, and you're going to see this on your homework. I don't really have an example pulled up right now, but I'll give it to you on your homework. You're going to have answer choices on your homework. So you're not having to write them from scratch. But what happens is in these answer choices, a lot of times they're going to mix up the X and Y. So they're going to write something like, 2y plus 3x. 
Did the two go with a Y? So you're going to be very easily able to eliminate answer choices if you can know what your variables stand for and just like literally match them up. Okay, it's not going to be that bad, I promise you. We got this. This is, we're going to, we're going to knock this one out. But y'all go ahead and flip this over. So that's verbal description and your three types of verbal description you might see. You might also see a system of equations already graphed for you that you want to write an equation for. Okay, notice here it's not asking you what's the solution. We all know the solution is right there at 2 comma 1. But it's asking you to write the equations. When we're asked to write an equation and we're given a graph, I just want to fill out y equals mx plus b. If I want to fill out y equals mx plus b, what does the m stand for? Uh, slope. slope. And what does the b stand for? The, Ooh. the y. The y. Intercept. Intercept. Very cool. Okay, let's write that down so we can remember. M is the slope, which is the rise over the run. And B is the y-intercept. Okay, I'm going to highlight. I know you guys don't have highlighters with you unless you do. I'm going to highlight the one that's a positive in green and the one that's negative in purple so that you know which ones I'm talking about in each problem. We're going to do the green equation first. I need a slope and a y-intercept. Check it. There's the y-intercept. Woo, got it. What's the y-intercept here? Negative 3. Great. We already know what the b-value should be. How do I find the slope, though? Uh, choose two points. Choose two points. I'm going to choose this point and this point. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. And then I'm going to count the rise over the run. How much did I go up? Two over one. Two and then over one. So what is the slope two over one? Two, right? Okay, so this equation for the green one is y equal to 2x minus 3. That slope we found was 2, and where it crossed the y-intercept was negative 3. Is everybody following? Yeah, what was your slope? Our slope was 2. It was Well, it was 2 over 1, but isn't 2 over 1 just the same as 2? Yeah. Okay, now let's do the purple one. I'm going to zoom back in. You tell me right now. What's the y-intercept? Two. 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 We're just looking for the place where, is that positive two or negative two? Positive. positive. So we're going to have plus two on the end of our equation, right? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now how do I find the slope? Two. Pick two good points. I'm going to pick this point and this point. Is that okay with everybody? No. No. <laughs> well, I'm going to do it anyways, Alex. All right, now I'm going to count the rise over the run. One, two, one. I went one, but which direction did I go uh, one? left oh my gosh down we went down one so that's negative direction and then to the right how many two so my slope this time is negative one over two okay so you, you never go up. i mean you never if you're going down you never go up, right? correct okay. correct if it's a negative slope you should be counting downwards always to the right always to the right Okay, so now we have our numbers. Can you guys write it for me? Just check real quick. Write it down before I do. What's the y equals here? Y equals. Oh, no, no, don't say it out loud. You just do put it on your paper. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Thank you for being ready for that. Wow. Okay, I'm seeing really good things. Very cool. Hopefully you wrote down that this is negative 1 over 2x plus 2. How do we do? Who forgot my yeah. who, who forgot my negative? Thanks for being honest. Yeah, don't forget my negative. We got to have a negative slope if it's going down. Uh, bonus uh, question here, and somebody already recognized this. What kind of lines are those? Ooh, one solution, one solution and they are perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular. Perpendicular means they meet at a perfect cross. Also, that their slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other, so flip and flip. Nice memory, like that. Okay, cool. Awesome, great. So we've actually written equations from graphs for like a month and a half. We're just doing two at the same time now. Yeah. Find a slope, find a y-intercept, but you just have to look at the graph for both of them. On the other hand, we can also write a system of equations from two tables. Now, this could get very complicated, so I'm going to make it super simple for you. Since we started learning how to write equations, we've also learned how to use technology to write equations. 
Does anyone remember that fancy number nine equation? No. Yes. Look at number nine and then make it fancy. Y. It's y. Y one equals oh, uh, uh, mx one uh -huh. plus b. Oh yeah, perfect. Everybody write that down. Y with a subscript of one, so y one squiggly line or tilde, whatever you want to call it. Equal or sorry, bloop. Y one squiggly line mx one plus b. This is going to be how we write equations anytime you see a table from here on out. We're going to have to do this twice, though, because we have two lines. We're going to do it once for line F, and then we're going to change out everything in Desmos, and we're going to do it once for line G. Okay? I'm going to go to Desmos real quick, and I'm going to help you write this, but I want everybody typing. I need everybody's fingers typing on this one. We'll come back to this screen in a second uh, to get the numbers. Now that we've seen the two numbers out of our Desmos, we literally will just write y equal whatever the m was. It was negative 3 with the x next to it. And then whatever the b was, positive 7. Oh, look, I'm done. I wrote the equation for this table. There's two, though. There's two, though. So am I done? No. No, guess what we need to do? Repeat everything. How did I get that again? That's a really good question. In my Desmos, after I type this equation in, it's gonna pop up with like an R squared value that we don't care about, an R value that's my co correlation coefficient that I, is nice, but I don't oh, need so right we, now. Oh, we just need the M and the B. Tells you an M and it tells you a B. That's what you would need right there. That's a good question. Do you see how those are the numbers that I put in mine no. from my Desmos? You see that those are the numbers that are in my thing? I need you guys to do the second one though. Can you find me the equation of the second line? So once we've gotten the M and the B for the purple line, for line G, we're going to write Y equal, I already forgot the number. What was it? Thank you. 1.75X plus 1.5. Very cool. So my slope is 1.75 and my Y intercept is 1.5. Voila. We've written the system for these two tables. Yay. Yay. Amazing. We can't go home, but we can switch activities now. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's go.